Pakistan might be crumbling. The Saudis, the Chinese and the Americans are all working hard to put Pakistan back together. Yet this may not work this time. Strangely, India is the one country that is unlikely to escape unharmed if things go south while Pakistan's closest allies are likely to escape without a scratch. India will unavoidably be affected by any spillover from the escalating turmoil in Pakistan. New Delhi's assumption that it might continue to be protected from its violent neighbour is only reasonable on the surface. Considering that no one can select their neighbours, whether they like it or not, India cannot distance itself from Pakistan or turn a blind eye as crisis after crisis slowly intensifies there. India must act, but the type of response it chooses will depend on the crisis that is presently enveloping Pakistan. Being distant may still be the appropriate course of action if it is just a passing incident in a long and problematic history, but if the crisis is systemic, the New Delhi's response needs to be far more proactive. According to the economic data, Pakistan's current financial crisis is not the consequence of random external factors like the conflict in the Ukraine, a rising currency or skyrocketing oil prices. Instead, it is systemic and was caused by years of economic inefficiency at all levels. Regardless of the party or prime minister in office, the government has been spending more than it is bringing in. The wealthy have been evading taxes and smuggling enormous sums of money out of the country for decades, leaving the average person with little left over for savings. This is in addition to the money-hungry military machine that requires billions to support its sizable army, terrorist mercenary groups, a modern air force and a developing nuclear arsenal. The one economic signal to keep an eye on in a developing nation is a low and declining savings rate. The savings rate in Pakistan was projected to be a pitiful 4.5% in 2021-22, down from a peak of 17.4% in 2004. India's saving rate, by contrast, was 28.2% in 2021. Population growth is only aggravating the situation. Although, if the population growth rate has decreased from a peak of 2.8% in the middle of the 1990s to roughly 1.9% in 2021, it is still one of the highest in the world. Pakistan's population increased by a staggering 23.6% between 2012 and 2021. Bangladesh and India were far behind at 12.2% and 11.2% respectively. It is not surprising that Pakistan's per capita income of $1,505 is lower than the average for South Asia as a whole, which is $2,149, given the country's diminishing productivity. The average Pakistani is experiencing food shortages and increasing food prices for the first time in its history. Throughout the previous 10 years, food inflation averaged around 9%, reaching an all-time high of 45.1% in February 2023. Thousands of people are reported to be fleeing Pakistan as a result of its crumbling economy. The Pakistani rupee has nearly lost all of its value and the nation is facing a mountain of external debt. At most, it can buy some time with aid from the International Monetary Fund, China and South Arabia. The nation's rapidly deteriorating political climate in which the supreme authority of the Pakistan army is seriously challenged and the cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan have both emerged as major threats to the establishment after having previously served as its pawns have added to this tinderbox situation. Given the seriousness of Pakistani's issues, immediate action is required. India's contribution could only be for utilitarian purposes, but that is unlikely to be of any use considering the amount of money currently being invested to stop the financial bleeding in Pakistan. Similarly, shipments of medicine or food are unlikely to change anything. There is a need for a much larger endeavour. If and when Pakistan's state structure begins to fall apart, New Delhi must be in a position to exert influence over key players in that country in order to erect a replacement in place. Given that Pakistan's supposed allies have never even attempted to unseat the evil forces that have controlled Pakistan since its founding in 1947, only India is capable of completing this task. This is despite the fact that the military-dominated government in Pakistan is fully aware that it has long since lost the right to exist due to its track record of incompetence and corruption. In order to achieve this, New Delhi must start secret and open conversations with the various Pakistani power groupings right at once to learn how they see the current state of affairs there and how best 
to build a democratic, just federal structure on top of the ashes of the former dictatorship. The alternative might be Pakistan's total dissolution and a protracted time of severe turmoil, which would result in untold suffering in that nation and possibly harm India as well. Thus, this is not the time to relax and enjoy the show. In order to protect India, New Delhi must intervene and permanently exterminate the disputed forces that have dominated Pakistan and ultimately brought it to its knees, impelled by the sole ideological purpose, which is the destruction of India. India has survived and is rising, therefore it cannot afford to ignore the enormous wasteland populated by inadequate state institutions, unruly ethnic warlords, fragile principalities and terrorist enclaves that stretches from its western borders all the way to Central Asia and Iran. It is in the best interest of both New Delhi and the entire globe to create a stable yet peaceful state in Pakistan. This is Anjana signing off. Do like and share this video. For further updates, subscribe to Comedy Global.